Passover begins at sundown this evening and celebrates the exodus of the Jewish people from Egypt. The Seder dinner is held on Friday and Saturday evening and includes readings, special food, songs, and other Passover traditions. Tonight, State Senator Eric Lesser shares a very special story about how he came to celebrate the Seder with President Obama, first on the campaign trail and then in the White House. Carolee McGrath has more. It was really just a, a personal reflection for me. Uh, it's actually 10 years since the first Seder was celebrated by President Obama and Mrs. Obama in the White House in 2009. So it just triggered a lot of thoughts, a lot of memories for me uh, of that period of my life and, and what that moment, what those events really meant for me. So wrote it for uh, Hampshire Life magazine, which is the uh, Sunday magazine of the Daily Hampshire Gazette. People can check it out online if they're interested. But for me, it was really just a personal chance to think about those uh, those years and what they really meant. Just rewind um, a little bit yeah. and tell us a little bit about your experience and, and how you were yeah. even connected with President Obama in the first place yeah. with your work. So uh, so it was back in 2007. I started out uh, as, a, as a volunteer in New Hampshire during the first presidential primary. It was actually around this time in the cycle we're now seeing of, of 2020. Uh, it was very, very early on in the cycle and I was uh, sh fresh out of college uh, and I was helping out um, then Senator Obama's campaign. Uh, eventually the job they gave me was to be in charge of all the luggage and logistics for him and for uh, the traveling staff that travel with him and for the 30 or so reporters that traveled everywhere he went. So I joke I was kind of like the mom on a family vacation, <laughs> keeping track of everyone's Blackberry chargers, suitcases, just making sure things uh, went smoothly. It was uh, really a breakneck pace, though, because uh, he was, of course, running for president. So we would often be in three or four states in a day. Uh, and I remember, uh, you know, Passover was always a time I would try to come home here to Western Mass to celebrate with my family. And I looked at the calendar, and it was basically impossible for me to get home with the travel schedule we had. I remember um, we were in Pennsylvania during the Pennsylvania primary. It was April of 2008. Then Senator Obama was going to start his morning in Philadelphia and do a whistle stop tour all the way to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania on the first night of Passover. So myself and uh, several friends of mine who worked on the campaign with me, we decided we were going to do a, a, a Seder uh, to mark the holiday just as a group of friends. So I mentioned this to uh, Senator Obama and he actually told me he wanted to come, uh, but I thought he was kind of being polite uh, when he said that. And, uh, and make a long story short, we found a windowless room in the basement of the Sheridan in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, uh, where we put together a, a little impromptu Seder with myself and several other campaign staff. Um, about 10 o'clock at night, after the whistle stop tour was done, just as we were about to begin, uh, Senator Obama popped his head in and he said, hey, uh, is this where you guys are doing the Seder? Uh, and we said, yeah, of course. Uh, so we celebrated what was really at the time a completely private, really intimate moment. Um, this was a very hard period of the campaign in 2008. The uh, Pennsylvania primary was a very tough primary for, uh, for Senator Obama. And um, it was just a, a really tough period of the campaign. And everyone kind of stopped. We told the story of Exodus. Uh, and at the end of the reading of the Haggadah, which is the traditional text you read on Passover that tells the story of the Jewish exodus from Egypt, at the very last line, there's a line, a traditional line, where everyone raises their glass and they say, next year in Jerusalem. So we all raised our glass and said, next year in Jerusalem, put our glasses down. Uh, and then Senator Obama raised his glass and he said, next year in the White House. And we all laughed and kind of clinked glasses and said, great. Fast forward a year later, uh, I'm working in the West Wing next door to the Oval Office as the assistant uh, to David Axelrod, who was the president's senior advisor at the time. And then President Obama pokes his head in and he says, hey, Lesser, you know, are we doing the Seder this year? Uh, and I kind of hesitated for a second, and he kind of jokingly said, he said, Lesser, he said, last year I said next year in the White House, and here we are in the White House. So uh, he and Mrs. Obama, of course, hosted what became at that point the very first Seder uh, hosted by an American president in the White House in American history. Were you surprised yeah. when he popped his head in and remembered that? Did you think like yeah. maybe he was just being polite at one point? Uh, I, I wasn't surprised because I, I know him and I know the kind of person he is and the kind of leader he is. Uh, of course I was impressed. Uh, he's a busy guy with quite a lot of scheduling conflicts. So I don't think anybody would have uh, minded if he uh, if he wasn't able to do it. But uh, he was someone who was very is and was 
guy is very loyal to his team, uh, very loyal to his staff, uh, and someone who really inspired, you know, quite a lot of, um, uh, you know, of affection and loyalty. And he does what he says, and he said he was going to hold the commitment and, and hold the Seder. And, and for him, it meant a lot, too. Uh, because I think, you know, he was very fluent in the story of Exodus. In fact, the first night back in 2008 on the campaign show, he noted to us that his wife and daughters were at a Seder of family friends of theirs in Chicago that very same night while he was in Pennsylvania uh, with us. As a person of faith, why um, is this so important to you to share this story? Well, I, I think it, it, it really reflects first on him, uh, but I also think, you know, we live in a time of such incredible division. Uh, it's become, frankly, trendy to sort of focus on what divides groups of people, groups of different religions, different ethnicities. Um, and here you had the first African-American president in American history celebrating um, and officiating really over, you know, the, the story of the biblical story story of the Jewish exodus from slavery in Egypt in a house built by slaves. Uh, it doesn't get more American than that uh, with all of our contradictions and challenges and also the optimism that's at the heart of our national story. And for me, the story of Exodus really isn't a story of hope. It's a story of redemption. It's a story of a people searching for belonging. And a lot of groups and a lot of people in modern times, regardless of your religion, regardless of your place or status in society, can find identity with that story. And that was really at the heart of what those satyrs were all about. They were not public. You know, they were not meant for a grand exposition. There were no reporters in the room. Uh, it was really just a private moment for a group of people who had really been forged through this common experience of a very tough political campaign. And how many years did you celebrate with him? So we celebrated in 2008, of course, which was a little ad hoc, you know, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Sheridan in Harrisburg. And then we celebrated in 2009 and every single year uh, of his presidency. So nine years in total, eight years in the White House. And I'll tell you, he went to great lengths personally personally to hold the commitment. One year he flew overnight from Afghanistan. Uh, he, had, he had met with President Hamid Karzai and had spoken to 2,000 American soldiers and um, sailors, airmen, and Marines at Bagram Air Force Base, and then flew all night, uh, landed at the White House uh, shortly before 9 a.m., and then celebrated the Seder with us uh, that evening. So uh, he always went to great lengths uh, to mark the holiday. And, and one element that we added um, at the suggestion of a friend of President Obama's, Eric Whitt uh, who would attend every year is we also uh, would retell and reshare the Emancipation Proclamation. We would do a shared reading of the Emancipation Proclamation after the reading of the, of the biblical story, again, to, to fuse past and present together uh, and to really forge commonality among peoples and groups um, that, again, can really find common inspiration in the Exodus story. And you talked a little bit about unity and, and how, you know, we all may be different, but we all have this common bond. I really, yeah. I think, you know, the, the basis of humanity is that we really do love each other. Passover is upon us. Easter is upon yeah. us as well. If you were to talk to um, middle school kids, high school yeah. kids uh, who might be watching this, you know, as we move forward, um, you know, how are we to treat each other? I think you treat your, each other with respect. Uh, you know, treat each person with dignity. Uh, each person is a blessing. Uh, and each person has an innate goodness that I think, you know, only through a meal. Uh, you know, the whole idea of Passover is you celebrate a festive meal because meals bring people together. You're, 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 you're less guarded. You're more likely to share with someone over a meal uh, because it's a communal exercise of sharing dishes and sharing each other's uh, experiences. Is I'll, I'll just leave you, Kelly, with a with a, just a story. Um, the the first year we did it in 2009, uh, there was a photo of all of us celebrating the the seder together, and my aunt brought the photo to my grandmother, who at the time was living in an assisted living facility in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. Oh, overwhelmingly Jewish. I'm familiar. Yeah, with that. <laughs> overwhelmingly Jewish uh, um, assisted living facility. You know, many of her contemporaries had escaped the Holocaust. They had escaped you know violent anti-Semitism in other parts of the world. For them, it was really never done to be so public about your Judaism uh, and my aunt showed her this photo and you know her response was just she shook her head and she said you know only in America uh, could something like this happen uh, the melting pot that is America the um, the different experiences that we all bring to the literally to the table right. is actually a source of strength and so what I would just challenge everyone 
to do in this season of Easter and this season of Passover is, is, is try to be someone who's mending fences and building bridges with other types of people and other groups of people rather than someone who's putting up, you know, uh, uh, putting up guards. Uh, and I think that's a lesson all of us can, uh, can keep to heart. Thank you.